The area is so remote, I'm told that rescue crews had to leave behind their ATVs and hike in on foot. The patrol car rolled so hard, it picked up this cinder block in the process, and it is lodged in the side of the car. A whistleblower contacted me. These documents outline a battle over the cleanup at the federal courthouse. It's a battle where almost everyone stepped in it. The Special Olympic athlete told me to enjoy the view, but don't look down. I'm going to take that advice. It's because this whole neighborhood is just sitting on sand. I'll step out of the way. You can see the work that crews are doing to dig out that water main to repair it. Anything at the higher elevations above three to 4,000 feet should fall as snow. Anywhere in the valley, it's probably going to be rain. The sidewalks along this street are littered in broken glass. Kevin Harpham explained to the judge why he planted the bomb right here. He set it in a way that it would shoot shrapnel across the street, shattering the glass to make a dramatic effect. Ultimately, he said it was a message of hate, and it did more to hurt his case than to help him. FBI agents say the backpack bomb was capable of killing hundreds of people. But Kevin Harpham says that wasn't his intention saying, when I built this device, it wasn't for this event. It was for something else I backed out of. That will clearly be something we, we look at. That's the first we've heard of that today. He didn't say what the bomb was built for originally, but it had a message of hate when he planted it on the MLK parade route last January. His intent? To scare people marching for unity in downtown Spokane, saying, just making a statement that there are people out there that don't agree with these ideas. Harpam says he wanted the explosion to hit the window of a nearby building for dramatic effect. The FBI says his real intention was much more sinister. The bomb's shrapnel was coated with a blood thinning poison. And that device was constructed with a clear lethal purpose. And I'm not sure why you would coat shrapnel with anticoagulant to, to break windows. The parade route was altered when three people found the suspicious looking backpack. Agents believe the reroute kept Harpam from detonating the device. He was arrested months later after agents tracked bomb components to his debit card. Ultimately, an act like this is an act of cowardice. The judge agreed, sentencing Harpam to 32 years, the maximum allowed in the plea agreement. The judge directed Harpam to reflect on his racist beliefs during his prison sentence. He left him with this, saying, it's not us versus them, it's just us. Now, Kevin Harpam can appeal today's sentencing and the plea agreement, but his attorneys would not comment after court this morning. Reporting in Spokane, Katie Udis, Crem 2 News. The neighborhood where I'm standing is just a few blocks south of the shooting scene on Newport Highway. It's where Wallace stole a vehicle to get away, but he may have picked the wrong neighbor to mess with. An 87-year-old woman walloped him multiple times with her cane. Mary Rock may not look so tough, but she was fighting mad Tuesday night. And I said, get out of my house. You don't belong in here. Get out of here. A large man had just jumped her fence, then broke through her back door. Oh, it was terrible. It was a big, heavy noise. And I thought, what in the world is going on around here? Police say it was 41-year-old Charles Wallace. He'd just shot two Spokane County Sheriff's deputies who tried to arrest him on a warrant for federal drug charges. He said, I want your car. I'm going to take your car. I said, you can't have my car. Wallace ripped Mary's phone out of the wall. She couldn't call for help, so she gave him the business end of her cane. Now I said, get out of here, and I began hitting him on the shoulder with my cane, and, and he pushed me over, and I fell on the ground. During the fight, Wallace spotted Mary's purse. He says, I want your car, and he opened it up, and he, he found the keys. She chased him out of the house, demanding the items back, unleashing cane strikes to his shoulders. Fortunately, he didn't fully fight back. They said that uh, he did have a gun, and I was lucky I didn't get the, the gun. Wallace crashed Mary's car after a high-speed chase with police. They say he then shot and killed himself. Mary just can't believe she became entangled in part of his crime spree. It's a terrible, terrible, terrible thing to go through at my age. Mary's nephew is helping her repair the back door and the phone line that was ruined during the scuffle. She tells me that the experience was so terrifying that she's considering moving from the neighborhood. Reporting in North Spokane, Katie Udis, Prem 2 News.
Jane and Randy, it's absolutely bizarre how this story f started. The woman found the cremains on Sprague Avenue, then desperately tried to find the family for over two months, even posting an ad on Craigslist. The human ashes on Anna Watson's shelf don't belong there. It's just nice to be able to actually see her, you know, and know she's there. It's a constant reminder that I've got to find her family. The remains are Naomi Lynn Walker. She died in 2008. Where Anna found the urn can only be described as bizarre. It was sitting along Sprague Avenue in Spokane, near several taverns and homeless shelters. Anna tells me the cremains were found along the curb of the sidewalk, which makes her believe that they were dropped there and not placed there. I've gone to the shelters, I've left messages with each of them. Um, I have talked to a lot of the homeless. She even posted an ad on Craigslist. When Crem2 News heard that, I started making calls, eventually finding Naomi Walker's brother, Ben Leroy. He lives in Snohomish County in western Washington, where Walker died. Well, what do you say when someone finds your sister's ashes on the side of the road? Leroy says his nephew had the cremains and may have been homeless in Spokane. Leroy had no idea his sister's remains were missing. Family's everything, whether they're gone or with you, you know. We've connected Leroy with Watson. Now, after two months, Naomi Walker's remains will be reunited with family, right where they should be. If this was my mom, I'd want somebody to take as good a care of her as I have Naomi. You know, Anna Watson, God bless her, you know, for doing what she did. Leroy tells me his sister was 54 and died of a heart attack. He hasn't yet had the opportunity to speak with his nephew about how the cremains were lost, but says he'll update us when he finds out. Reporting live, Katie Udis, Crem 2 News. Monster trucks have roared into the Spokane County Raceway, like this famous beast, Bigfoot. Driver Dan <laughs> Runty holds a Guinness World Very Record for jumping the truck 202 feet. Right What's it like to drive one of these things? You want to? Heck yeah, I do. <laughs> I recognize an opportunity when I see one. A monster truck has 1,500 horsepower. Now that's like eight cars, and you're sure going to hear it when I start it up. Everybody likes to see a good crash, but you'll never see a monster truck do the same thing twice, and that's what's cool about it. You know, you may hit the same jump twice, but usually the outcome's going to be different because they're kind of unpredictable. That was Dan, not me. We're going to do wheelies, donuts, and then a full-blown freestyle. I mean, you're going to see a lot of stuff here that you don't see indoors because they've got school buses and vans and some pretty good-sized pyramids, you know, so it's, it's big air and it's wide open. It's stunts like Dan's that Raceway organizers hope will draw the crowd Saturday. We hope to pack the place. It's obviously you never know with weather and what's going to happen, but I expect a great crowd. Capacity is 5,000 at the Raceway. Last weekend's event filled the stands. The county says it brought in an estimated 580 thousand dollars to the local economy. People fulfilling their need for speed and power, like me. The last one's a big one. <laughs> well, that's an drive, adrenaline rush. <laughs> and that's, when you drive them, it bunches it all together. Oh my goodness, yeah, I'm a little Look shaky. <laughs> you can catch your adrenaline rush Saturday at 5. General admission is $25. Kids 12 and under are free. Reporting and driving from Spokane County Raceway, Katie Udis, Crem 2 News.